Welcome to the Jamoti Podcast. We are all surrounded by amazing coaches and leaders. So let's get an inside look at not just what they do, but how they do what they do. After all, becoming the best versions of ourselves is Jamoti, just a matter of doing it. Coaches, the Jamoti Podcast is powered by Biology. What's your BSA score? The Biology Skill Assessment is the only verified skills metric endorsed by the NIA and NJCAA to discover and develop the best talent for your team. This 10 minute, 100 shot test can be taken for free today on the Biology mobile app. Elevate your game. I think there's a lot of coaches that, especially at smaller schools like I'm at, where we don't necessarily have a full-time strength coach. And so there may be somebody in the school, a lot of times as a football coach that it may just give us workouts, or if it's like me, I want to try to do my very best to have a basketball tailored workout for my players. Uh, what are some strength training areas or or just areas of workouts that for basketball players we we need to be focusing on? We we can't miss. Yeah, yeah. Now I I think it's really I talked earlier really about these movement patterns. It's critical that basketball players have the ability to, whether it's bilateral, two legs, or unilateral, a single leg exercise, where they can squat and get out of that position with ankle dorsiflexion. And all that means is my knees travel forward near my toes or past my toes with my foot flat on the ground. But because my knee travels forward and my foot's flat, for the most part, the weight's going to go to the ball of the foot where I want it. And the reason I'm saying this is critical, we we saw, unfortunately, the, the other night, Villanova, one of their players ruptured a, a, an Achilles tendon. Well, the reasons could be multiple, but that is an example. When we get at those extreme ranges of yeah. motion, yeah. something's going to give at times. And unfortunately, players, that's what they'll, they'll have. So if I can do squatting like a step up or a single leg squat where I just squat down, my butt touches a bench. And I stand back up on one leg, okay, that, which is much more intense, but it's very safe. The ability to do that and get through dorsiflexion not only gives me this ability to have strength and force and power and all that stuff, but it makes me do that in these full range of motions where when we stress the tissues, the tissues get kind of sore and, and kind of ornery for a day or two. But then what happens is they, they get stronger. Stress adds um like tensile strength and it adds tissue so it gets stronger so now i can handle more and the more we do that the better we get so that's a staple for me with with basketball another one that's really big is you you and your your uh, listeners might be familiar with what's called a payoff press a payoff press is basically taking a band or a cable standing perpendicular to it sideways kind of like sideways to it and taking it and pressing the handle out away from my chest. And what's happening is that that cable or band wants to pull me, my body back that way. So it's it's a core driven exercise, but what makes it critical for basketball is it's driven by how my stance is. So if we get in a defensive stance and we press that cable away from our body, longer arms, it gets harder the further we get because the band's trying to pull me towards the attachment point. That I do every single workout as an activation or as a pure strength trainer. But what it's doing is it's making my feet feel the angle as if there was actually force going on. Like I was actually decelerating. So those are some of the things. And obviously bench press, you know, shoulder press, all those are critical because it builds good, healthy joints if we do it right. Real quick on, on both of those, the major ones you've mentioned, uh, sets and rep ranges. Uh, what, what are your thoughts on that? Yep. So I, I think anytime you're in the five to eight range, you're safe. Now, if you have some athletes in the off season, you want to put a little bit of weight on them and you want some hypertrophy, a little bit more muscle, bring that to eight to 12 to 15 reps. And we might do two to three sets. Okay. If we're going to stay in that five, six range of reps, we can push that up to four reps, excuse me, four sets. Um, but I don't think you can go wrong with three because of time commitment yeah. and, and the overall stress to a body. If, if they were doing absolutely nothing else, no other physical stress, you could say five sets of five and do stuff like that. But I think you do three sets of, let's, let's give a day here. So let's say 
uh, today, all right, on, on this particular day, we'll call this an A day. Right? You as a teacher understand yep. uh, A day, B day, A day, right? So A day, we're going to do an explosive lift first. The nervous system is fresh. It's, it's, it's not fatigued. So let's do the box jump you talked about. Let's do three sets, five reps, maximum effort, as high as you can. Okay. After that, now we're going to go into what we call supersets, which means we're going to do two exercises, non-competing, back-to-back. So now we might go into maybe we want to do a type of a squat, okay? We could do a goblet squat where we hold a kettlebell or a dumbbell and squat, or we could do a barbell squat. We're going to do three sets of five to six reps of those. We're going to rest maybe 45 to 60 seconds, and then we're going to go over to the dumbbells and we're going to do dumbbell shoulder press. And we're going to do that five, six, seven reps, three sets. And we're going to, and then once we've done that, we're going to move on to two other patterns. And we can go to maybe a row, a dumbbell row. We could do a strap row. We could do something like that. And we like to hit two leg exercises if we can. So if we squatted, now we might do a secondary leg exercise, maybe like an RDL, like you mentioned before, a hip hinge, or you could literally just lay them on their backs, have them bend their knees and do a single leg glute bridge. Maybe they tug, you know, hug one knee to their chest and they raise their butt off the ground by pushing their foot of the other leg into the ground. And that's a great glute hamstring, kind of a hinge type pattern. And then if that for me, that would be pretty much it. But if I wanted to throw a core exercise in there, I could do that as well. And then on the B day, let's switch those. Maybe we're going to do a medicine ball upper body explosive rather than a lower body. And then rather than doing that squat, we're going to start off with our hinge pattern. So an RDL or something of that matter. Rather than doing a vertical press, we're going to do bench press. So we're going to do push-ups. Rather than doing a, a pull-up, or excuse me, a row, we're going to do a pull-up. So see how we just, we just, yeah. yeah, that way the athletes get exposure to all those. You get balance in them and it's so easy to manipulate it. And here's one other thing I would do to add variety. If you go four weeks doing all bilateral stuff, the next four weeks, you could do all unilateral stuff and then go back to four. So that way it's always fresh for them. They can see their strength going up and it's a great way to keep them healthy. That's good. Do you, do you, so you're talking a, B, a day, B day, you know, if that's four days a week, uh, is there anything we need to be concerned with them, you know, getting legs in or a, a leg movement four times a week like that? Uh, no, not as long as the reps are appropriate and they're getting rest. But if you know you're going to go four days a week, then what I would do is I do like my A day might be all upper body and my B day might be all lower body. And then but with, go, with the same with those same splits though, like are the yeah. same supersets with a movement like this, and then another movement here, and then all okay, I like that. Yeah, yeah, you can mix it. It's just it's it's just based on the reason I like A day B day is because if I'm training, let's say you can only get one day in a week. All right. Well, what you could do is just choose whatever it is that you're going to do those exercises and do the supersets. And get exposure to all those lifts as much as you can. But if you're going to go two days a week, you got an A day, you got a B day. You go three days, A day, B day, B or A day, yeah. and then next week it's B day, A day, B day, and then it just alternates. And if it's four days a week, you can split it upper and lower body, so you you can manipulate it however it works best for your athletes. I like that. That's that, and and uh, thank you for sharing some of those those activities because as you're as you're talking, I. Literally, I could see the workout that we're putting together and some good things that we need to adjust, but but then also validation of some other areas where, okay, we're not too far off. So that's yeah, good. Yeah. Thank you for checking out today's episode. Please take a moment to subscribe to this podcast, share it with your fellow coaches, and find us on social media for what's coming up next on the Jamoti podcast. It's just a matter of doing it.